In this video, I'm going to talk about understanding ease curves, and one of the best tools to understand eases is the Greensock Ease Visualizer. You're going to want to go to greensock.com slash docs, and you can just go from the Greensock site and click on the docs button, and then you're going to click on eases in the left nav. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space by going full screen here, and let's just bring the ease visualizer into view, okay? So the Ease Visualizer gives us a graph of the ease that we're using. Now, it's important to understand that on the bottom represents the progress of the tween. So I'm just going to hit Run, and you're going to see this line very faintly going across, okay? Uh, consider that to be that virtual playhead I showed you about in the beginning of the course, all right? It's always going to move left to right at a constant rate, okay? But as the playhead's moving left to right over the progress of the tween, the Y or vertical axis here shows us the rate of change, okay? So let's start out with a linear ease or what Greensock calls power zero, all right? You'll see here you have a straight line. And if you keep your eye on the ball, uh -huh. um, you're going to notice that it's always moving at a constant rate, boom, and then stops suddenly, sort of like the pink Fred did in the previous demo. And so if we look at this chart here, you're going to see that as we progress to a progress of 50% here, if we go up, we're also at a value that's halfway through the tween. If we go to a progress of 1, we go to the end value here. So let's just go to a power 1 ease, and you'll see that we introduce a slight curve. And if you keep your eye on the ball, you'll see that it slows down towards the end. Now the secret to reading ease curves is that wherever it is steep, it signifies a great amount of change, all right? So if I go out here to 50% of the progress and start going up, you'll see that I'm roughly at, I don't know, like 75% of the value that I'm tweening to. So that's a great amount of change in a short amount of progress or time. And then towards the end where it gets flat, that means things are slowing down. I'm gonna increase the strength of the ease by clicking on power two, and you'll see here that it gets steeper in the front and more of a shallow or gentle grade towards the end. So this is showing us that over the last 50% of the tween, there's very little change in value. So when that ball gets close to the top, it slows down, okay? So again, all you need to know is the steeper it is, the quicker the rate of change. Right now, this is referred to as a power to out ease, okay, meaning that on the way out, it's going to slow down or go easy. I'm going to switch that over to an in, and you're going to see now that we have the flatness at the beginning and the steepness at the end. So when you see flat, you think slow. When you think when you see steep, you think fast. So now with this ease, it's going to go slow on the way in, boom, and then speed up towards the end. So when you're using an ease in, it's usually when something is on screen and then moving off, all right? It's gonna start with zero speed, it's gonna slowly accelerate and then zoom away. Whereas an ease out is sort of when you're introducing things, okay? So something might be off screen and then slow down as it comes to a stop, all right? And as you may have just seen, there's also in out. So it's gonna start slow, go fast, and then go slow again. So here you have flat down at the bottom, steep in the middle means fast, and flat at the end means slow. As you're using the Greensock Ease Visualizer, it gives you the code that you need for each ease. So in general, power zero is no easing at all, and then as you go power one to power two to power three to power four, they increase the strength of the easing, okay? I'm gonna go back to an out, okay? And I want to show you one of my favorite eases, which is back. And the back ease overshoots the target value, okay? So if this is our resting value here, you'll see at this part of the curve, it goes beyond that. So when I run this animation, the ball goes above and then comes back. An elastic ease is going to wiggle, do a rubber band effect around the ending values there. The bounce is going to bounce off the target values. So what's interesting here is in this ease, you might be like, wow, that's not a simple curve, that's pretty complex, and you'd be right. And so what's happening here is at the beginning, there's a great rate of change towards the end value, and then here, 
we're quickly going back towards where we began and that gives us the bounce effect and then it's going to slowly decide to go back to the end. So an important takeaway here is that the ease doesn't only dictate the rate of change but also the direction of change, all right? You don't just go from point A to point B. On the way to point B, you may go back to point A a little bit and then back to point B. So eases are very powerful. So let me just watch the bounce one more time. So awesome. So please check out the ease visualizer, play around with the different eases, and I'll definitely cover some more advanced easing techniques in another course. But for now, let's stick with the basics and move on.